Today's video is going to talk about the investment strategies that have served me really well over the last seven years. We've realized at this point, hopefully, that the crypto market is no longer easy mode to trade. What's easy mode? Well, easy mode is where you can throw a dart at a dartboard containing of multiple different cryptocurrency coins and whichever one it hits you buy and you'll probably go 10x. Now those parabolic bull market conditions might return again, but until they do, you can still make loads of money. The people that made the most money from 2021 were the ones that grinded throughout 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. Uh, well, most of them, some of them didn't, but the majority of them uh, did really well in 2021 because they built products, network, trading skills, investing skills, and leveraged those to make a whole bunch of money in 2021. And now we're in a position again where the market is quietening down and you've been presented with this opportunity to build these things up again. Now, I actually recommend people learn to invest before they even touch trading because trading is an income generating skill. Uh, you put your time in and in exchange for that time, you'll make money. However, investing is a little bit different. Investing will make you money for years to come and does not require direct time investment. It can purely be a risk investment, which is where you take on risk and you make money. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into this. There are a couple ways people generally do their investing. They use two strategies, mainly fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Now, with fundamental analysis, you use a variety of calculations and formulas, earnings per share, price to earnings, uh, return on equity, uh, just look at the cash flows of the company, whatever you want to do uh, to figure out whether or not the intrinsic value is uh, higher than the current price of the asset. And if the intrinsic value is higher, you buy with the expectation that the market will eventually take the price up there. Now, there's countless uh, problems with this. Uh, firstly, it's close to impossible to actually figure out the intrinsic value of something. Um, you can make errors in your calculations. You can get faulty information. You can come to wrong conclusions. You're also making the huge assumption that price will actually go towards intrinsic value. I mean, just take a look at GameStop earlier this year. With over 100% of the stock was shorted. Uh, there's a definitely a wide disconnect between intrinsic value and the actual price and at best they might trend towards each other over a very long period of time. Now, the other strategy you can use is technical analysis where you try to more actively manage your investments by buying support levels, selling resistance, using different strategies, maybe throw in some indicators you like. Uh, I know there's some Elliott Wave traders out there as well. Uh, all of these can be somewhat successful, but they do break down over a very long period of time. A quote I really liked, which I heard, I think it was Tom Dante say on Twitter. He said that, he no longer, after his long trading career, feels any FOMO when he sees traders make eight figures or nine figures in a single year. Uh, because until you retire, that money can and most likely will uh, disappear. There are a number of reasons for this, uh, most of which is psychological. People can get overconfident. They can go through some difficult life situations, which makes them trade worse. Uh, they get greedy. They get scared. They get fearful. There's a million different things that can go wrong. And all it really takes is one bad day, one bad week, or one bad month to wipe out years of hard work. So this is where investing comes in and can really help us uh guarantee to some degree, uh, though there's no such thing as guaranteed in the markets, that we're going to succeed over a long enough period of time. Now, I'm going to start by sharing my strategy that I've built through various different resources about how I plan to invest throughout my life, how I'm going to adjust risk, and then I'll share uh, five key principles to uh, properly investing. Now, uh, if you're subscribed to my newsletter, market meditations, you will have seen some of this content already in video form. It can be uh, more beneficial. Some people prefer written. I'll leave a link in the description below to the newsletter. Uh, make sure to sign up. There'll be plenty of content like this, trading, investing, entrepreneurship, anything that helps people build wealth and more and more health as well is something we're exploring. Uh, so for anyone who's interested, it's 100% free. Enjoy. Now you should see an image right now on the screen. Now we haven't included crypto here. Uh, we're trying to make it very, very simple where we've got 
Index funds and real estate, a little bit more risky. Bonds, a little less risky. Cash, uh, the least risky. And you can see the one key principle that you want to bear in mind as you age is that you take on less risk. Because the older you are, say you're when you're in your 20s, you can afford to invest in risky assets. Because if they go down 50% one year, you just buy more and you wait out until you tell, turn 30, 50 or 60. However, in a different situation where you're in your 60s, if you invest a bunch of your net worth into some risky stocks or real estate and you take a huge hit, well, you can't really wait that long, can you? Because you'll turn 70 or 80 and there really isn't that much time left after that. So you need to reduce the volatility on your portfolio. So the one variable to manage is risk and the concept that I've been applying, it's really simple. The younger I am, the more risk I'm going to take on because I don't have that much responsibility and I've got a lot of time to wait out investments that don't go that well and I can always earn back more through leveraging skills I've built. As I grow older, I'm going to start reducing that risk uh, through either the assets I invest in, the amount of diversification I take on, or the means at which I, through which I rebalance. Now, those were a few different concepts I threw at you. Uh, let's dive into more detail with what those are and how they work. So the first principle, which I shared, is risk and reward. Taking a humble approach to the markets, assuming you have no edge, which is what all these passive strategies are based off of, uh, we assume risk and reward are correlated. The more risky the asset, the more potential upside there is. The less potential upside there is, the less risky the asset. So I somewhat attach risk to volatility and we can determine our risk tolerance based on a few things, age being a key factor, also how much spare income we have, whether we have responsibilities like family, kids, school fees, medical fees, whatever that might be. The other principle is the length of hold time decreases the risk of an asset. The longer you hold on to an asset, the more likely it is to perform according to its expected value. Let's take the stock market, for example. Over the last 150 years, maybe 170 now, the stock market's averaged about 8% a year. So if you invest into the stock market and hold it for the next 20 years, it's a lot more likely for it to approach that 8% per year than it is if you hold it five years or 10 years. The other strategy, which is growing ever more popular, which I love to see, is dollar cost averaging. Uh, now, dollar cost averaging is buying at set intervals every week. That's the surface level. But to dive into why it works and how it works is because, uh, one, psychologically, it's very easy. It's very easy to put aside X amount that you continually invest in. Uh, the other reason it works quite nicely is because it diversifies your timing risk. So it makes it less likely that you buy at the very top of the market and it makes it less likely that you buy at the very bottom. What you're doing is you're spreading your risk again to get closer to the expected value of an asset. Applying this same concept to say Bitcoin, I expect Bitcoin to trend upwards for the next decade at least. Therefore, if I dollar cost average into Bitcoin, I should be able to capture that expected value, which is a long-term uptrend. Notice with Bitcoin, I avoid attaching any specific percentage because unlike like the stock market, I don't have over a century of data to base any percentage off of. Another key principle when it comes to this is defining your capital. Uh, determine how much money you can invest and more importantly, how much you can afford to lose. If losing your investment means you'll need to drastically change your lifestyle, you might want to downside your risk, both for psychological and practical reasons as well. Now, if you want specific percentages, uh, this is again something we wrote about. I'll leave a link to the specific article in the description below uh, in our newsletter. Um, more reason to subscribe for free information like this. The last strategy, uh, which is very helpful and important, is rebalancing. And what rebalancing does is just make sure you stick to your desired allocations. If you want to have 50% stocks, 50% crypto, and in one year crypto goes up 100%, suddenly you have 75% crypto, 25% stocks. If you're following a rebalancing strategy, you will sell some crypto, buy some stocks, and then rebalance that to your desired percentages. If you've made it to the end and you want more content like this to help you build wealth and health, 
subscribe to the channel and hit the like button because it really helps.